Hello, Israel Ruth. It's Grandma and Jane still. I'm going to read from our, one of our favorite authors, Beatrice Potter. I know you have enjoyed going through this book with me. I read this one to you the last time I was up there. This is one of Grandma's favorite, The Tale of Mrs. Tibby Winkle. Beatrice Potter wrote this in 1905. Although many of Beatrice Potter's storybook animals were based on her own pets, she often gave them human qualities too. The character of Miss Tiggy Winkle was inspired by Kitty MacDonald, an old Scottish washerwoman, a comical round little old woman as brown as a berry and wears a multitude of petticoats. She first told the story to her cousin Stephanie Hyde Park in 1901, though it was eventually dedicated on publication in 1905 to Lucy Carr, the daughter of the Vicar of Newlands, the valley in which the tale is set. Beatrice Tame Hedgehog, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, did her duty as a model. So long as she can go to sleep on my knee, she is delighted, but if she is propped up on end for half an hour, she first begins to yawn pathetically, and then she does bite. Nevertheless, she is a dear person. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Lucy who lived at a farm called Littletown. She was a good little girl, only she was always losing her pocket handkerchiefs. One day, little Lucy came up into the farmyard crying, oh, she did cry so. I've lost my pocket hankin, three hankins and a penny. Have you seen them, tabby kitten? The kitten went on washing her white paws, so Lucy asked a speckled hen, Sally Henny Penny, have you found three pocket hankins? But the speckled hen ran into the barn clucking, I go barefoot, barefoot, barefoot. And then Lucy asked Cock Robin, sitting on a twig. Cock Robin looked sideways at Lucy with his bright black eye and flew over a stile and away. Lucy climbed up on the stile and looked over the hill. Behind, the, behind Little Town, a hill that goes up, up into the clouds as though it had no top. And a great way up the hill, a, a great way up the hillside, she thought she saw some white things spread upon the grass. Lucy scrambled up the hill as fast as her stout legs would carry her. She ran along a steep path up, up a little town, was right away down below. She could have dropped a pebble down the chimney. Presently, she came to a spring bubbling from the hillside. Someone had stood a tin can upon the stone to catch water. But the water was already running over, for the can was no bigger than an egg cup. And where the sand upon the path was wet, there were footmarks of a very small person. Lucy ran on and on. The path ended under a big rock. The grass was short and green, and there were clothes props cut from bracken stems with lines of plaited rushes and heaps of tiny clothespins, but no pocket handkerchiefs. But there was something else, a door. Straight in to the hill and inside it, someone was singing, lily white and clean, oh, with little frills between, oh, smooth and hot, red rusty spot, never here be seen, oh. Lucy knocked once, twice, and interrupted the song. A little frightened voice called out, Who's that? Lucy opened the door, and what do you think there was inside? A nice, clean kitchen with flagged floor and wooden beams, just like any other farm kitchen. Only the ceiling was so low that Lucy's head nearly touched it, and the pots and pans were so small, and so was everything there. There was a nice, singy smell at the table with an iron and excuse me there was a nice hot singy smell and at the table with an iron in her hand stood a very stout short person staring anxiously at Lucy her print gown was tucked up and she was wearing a large apron over her striped petticoat 
Her little black nose went sniffle, sniffle, snuffle, and her eyes went twinkle, twinkle, and underneath her cap, where Lucy had yellow curls, that little person had freckles. Who are you? said Lucy. Have you seen my pocket hankins? The little person made a bob curtsy. Oh, yes, if you please them. My name is Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Oh, yes, if you please them. I am an excellent clean starcher. And she took something out of the clothes basket and spread it on the ironing blanket. What's that thing, said Lucy. That's not my pocket hankin. Oh, no, if you please them. That's a little scarlet waistcoat belongs to Cock Robin. And she ironed it and folded it and put it to one side. Then she took something else off the clothes horse. That isn't my penny, said Lucy. Oh, no, if you please them. That's a damask tablecloth belonging to Jenny Wren. Look how it's stained with the current wine. It's very bad to wash, said Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle's nose went sniffle, sniffle, snuffle, and her eyes went twinkle, twinkle, and she fetched another hot iron from the fire. There's one of my pocket hankins, cried Lucy, and there's my penny. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle ironed it and goffered it and shook out the frills. Oh, that is lovely, said Lucy. And what are those long yellow things with fingers like gloves? Oh, that's a pair of stockings belonging to Sally Henny Penny. Look how she's worn the heels out with the scratching in the yard. She'll very soon go barefoot, said Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Why, there's another hank, handkerchief, but it isn't mine. It's red. Oh, no, if you please them. That one belongs to old Mrs. Rabbit, and it did so smell of onions. I've had to wash it separately. I can't get out the smell. There's another one of mine, said Lucy. What are those funny little white things? That's a pair of mittens belonging to Tabby Kitten. I only have to iron them. She washes them herself. There's my last pocket hankin, said Lucy. And what are you dipping into the basin of starch? They're little dicky shirt fronts belonging to Tommy, Tom Titmouse. Most terrible particular, said Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Now I've finished my ironing. I'm going to air some clothes. What are these dear, soft, fluffy things, said Lucy. Oh, those are the woolly coats belonging to the little lambs at Chico. Will their jackets take off, asked Lucy. Oh, yes, if you please them. Look at the sheep marks on the shoulder. And here's one marked for Gatesgar, and three that come from Little Town. They're always marked at washing, said Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. And she hung up all sorts and sizes of clothes, small brown coats of mice, and one velvet, velvety black moleskin waistcoat, and a red tailcoat with no tail belonging to Squirrel Nutkin, and a very much shrunk blue jacket belonging to Peter Rabbit, and a petticoat, not marked that had gone lost in the washing, and at last the basket was empty. Then Mrs. Tiggy Winkle made tea for a cup for herself and a cup for Lucy. They sat down by the fire on the bench and looked sideways at one another. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle's hand holding the teacup was very, very brown and very, very wrinkly with the soap suds, and all through her gown and her cap, there were hairpins sticking wrong end out so that Lucy did not like to sit too near her. When they had finished tea, they tied up the clothes and bundles and Lucy's pocket handkerchiefs were folded up inside her clean penny and fastened with a silver safety pin. And then they made up a fire with turf and came out and locked the door and hid the key under the door sill. Then away down the hill trotted Lucy with Mrs. Tiggy Winkle with the bundles of clothes. All the way down the path, little animals came out of the fern to meet them. The very first they met were Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. And she gave them their nice clean clothes and all the little animals and birds were very much obliged. 
to dear Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. So that at the bottom of the hill, when they came to the stile, there was nothing left to carry except Lucy's one little bundle. Lucy scrambled up the stile with the bundle in her hand, and then she turned to say good night and thank you to the washerwoman. But what a very odd thing. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle had not waited either for thanks or for the washing bill. She was running, running, running up the hill. And where was her white frilled cap and her shawl and her gown and her petticoat? And how small she had grown and how brown and covered with prickles. Why, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle was nothing but a hedgehog. Now, some people say that little Lucy had been asleep upon the stile, but then how could she have found three clean pocket hankins and a penny pinned with a silver safety pin? And besides, I have seen that door into the back of a hill called Catbells. And besides, I am very well acquainted with dear Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. The end. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you, Israel Ruth Toller. Bye-bye. <laughs>